I will start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 uh, our subject is lumbar spine stenosis. This is a very hot subject. And um, uh, recently we are uh, making a publication on the uh, consensus uh, recommendations of WFNS spine committee. Uh, you will recently find uh, the papers on in World Neurosurgery. Stenosis is an old term, actually. It's coming from the uh, times of uh, myelography. Uh, we were injecting a, a contrast fluid inside the uh, tackle sac, and uh, if it, it then uh, narrows in a place uh, like a river, then that that place was called as stenotic. Because of that, we are still using that term. Probably narrowing is, is a better uh, term. Neurogenic claudication is the uh, most common uh, symptom of uh, lumbar spine stenosis. In some cases, there may be low back pain. Um, most of them, it is, uh, mostly it is a acquired disease, a degenerative disease. Uh, but there are some young age cages, uh, cases uh, with idiopathic or achondroplastic uh, congenital etiology. According to the location, we can uh, call that uh, central stenosis, lateral stenosis, or foraminal stenosis. Uh, the levels with frequency is the most common level is the L45 then 3, 4, 2, 3, and L5S1. The concept of motion segment helps us understanding pathophysiology happening with stenosis. Uh, this is uh, one disc level adjacent to end plates and facet joints at the back. So this, this uh, degeneration phases of Kirkaldi and Willis uh, are very informative. Uh, actually, first, some changes inside the disc happen. This is a dysfunctional phase. Then, uh, with multiple annular lacerations, decrease of disc height happens. This is an unstable phase. Then, stabilization phase uh, comes uh, with disc resorption, new osteophyte formations, and the body itself try to uh, fuse that level. This is the uh, phases by the time, dysfunctional phase, unstable and rest stabilization phase. So then your treatment uh, will depend on which phase you are. And in, in Eastern uh, uh, cases, uh, there may be different levels. With one level is unstable, one level is the rest stabilization phase. So the mobile uh, motion segment, uh, uh, what happens there, you can see the, the ligaments laxed, facet joints are overloaded, this height is decreased. So in, a, in the pathophysiology, we can call a, a, a period of soft stenosis uh, and then uh, with some subluxation, dynamic stenosis, and uh, hypertrophy of facets and uh, buckling of the ligaments. There is, in fact, there is no real hypertrophy of the ligament. Because of the buckling of them, we uh, understand it is like hypertrophic. It is not really hypertrophic because the ligaments cannot uh, grow by the time. Uh, then heart stenosis phase we can uh, consider. Uh, neurogenic claudication in, is the main symptom in more than 95% and absolute indication is for Caldo-Equina syndrome. So then most of the instances uh, we uh, offer a surgery to a, a patient uh, because of, uh, in order to increase uh, the quality of life. This is a, a congenital narrowing case. 
with cauda equina and perianal sensor loss, urinary incontinence, and uh, he must have a <coughs> emergent uh, surgery. As you can see, the canal and uh, not only the AP diameter, uh, but also the lateral diameter is narrow. This is the pedicle level. A pedicle is almost absent. Very, very short pedicle. If we come to the surgical techniques, uh, there are mainly decompression or decompression plus fusion surgeries. There are different types. Uh, in, the, in the past, we were just doing total laminectomies. Then we switched to do uh, fenestrations by bilateral muscle spreading. Uh, this is a typical case of fenestration, three level fenestrations. Then we switched to do unilateral approach and bilateral decompressions. Recent trend is to protect ligaments, facet, and then uh, we can avoid the instability. How can we do, do that uh, unilateral approach and bilateral decompression? You can either use a hemilaminectomy retractor with microsurgical technique, or you can use tubes, tube guided surgery. Uh, very few of us are also using uh, endoscope, interlaminar endoscope uh, to make that uh, decompressions. Uh, I, I'm quite familiar with tube guided surgery. Uh, I was doing at the beginning as with using endoscope, then I switched to microscope. Uh, I'm more happy with that. A uh, flexible arm uh, can help you uh, to ungrate your uh, view uh, and you can sometimes uh, do uh, two level uh, decompressions with one incision only. This is uh, pre-op and post-op films. Here you can see the pre-op and post-op films of, of the patient. Uh, there is a good uh, central uh, decompression of the spinal canal. You can even do four level surgeries. This is a very old man, 78 years old man with 10 years of history of numbness of both legs and four levels, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five uh, surgery. Uh, this is after surgery incision lines and this is after surgery, uh, the compression, as you can see, uh, the, this is the, that fluid shows us that our tube was here. This is pre-op and post-op films uh, on the right. Okay, the advantages of tube guided decompression is uh, it may be applied in all forms of herniations and spinal stenosis. Small modifications of conventional instruments, baseline equipments are inexpensive, and the learning time is shorter, and you can uh, either use uh, endoscope or microscope. Uh, some facts about MIS decompression, maybe we can, uh, I want to stress that. Uh, this is a very effective choice of surgical treatment because the post-operative comfort of the patient is, is very nice and the, uh, it may even be done as a day surgery. Uh, however, MIS decompressions are not superior to the open decompressions in terms of clinical outcomes. If you follow them three to six months, you can find some differences, but in the long term, uh, it it disappears, then it's almost same. However, infection rate is less, and probably iatrogenic instability is less, but there is not a very high level of evidence uh, in the literature that we can say by MIS decompressions, we are getting less instabilities afterwards. When when fusion is necessary, if you create iatrogenic instability, if there is a degenerative lysis or scoliosis with back pain, 
and if there is flat back syndrome with kyphosis yes these are the main indications of fusion but they are somewhat open so then we can discuss that probably we can use the terminology complex lumbar spine stenosis uh, if there is a additional degenerative list stages scoliosis or kyphosis if uh, there is radiological instability and uh, if there is a previous lumbar spine surgery and postoperative adjust segment stenosis these must be called as complex lumbar spine stenosis flat back syndrome is actually a lumbar kyphosis or a lack of lordosis this is a typical case of flat back syndrome and old lady uh, i have suggested an l45 osteotomy and fusion surgery uh, what are the surgical options if you intend to make a uh, fusion surgery uh, so sorry if you want to make a surgery in a stenotic cases uh, decompression alone decompression plus fusion and decompression plus dynamic fixation are the options decompression alone even in a case with degenerative list stages is possible if there are osteophytes if there is no movement in dynamic films we can call it a stable segment with osteophytes or stable degenerative list stages we can call it uh, and uh, these are mostly uh, significant loss of this space patients however if uh, on functional fields, if there is significant uh, uh, subluxation, mobility, if the disc height is preserved, if the facet joints are segmentalized, if there are no osteophytes and osteo osteoporosis, those patients may have candidate, may be candidates for uh, instrumented fusion. There are uh, different types of fusion techniques, interbody, postural fusion, uh, and there, there is another option, a dynamic fixation, to prevent adjusted segment degeneration. Uh, one of the most cited publications uh, from New England Journal of Medicine 2016 uh, has examined uh, the patients uh, with lumbar spinal stenosis and with and without degenerative list stages. They, and uh, the, the conclusion is the compression plus fusion uh, has not given better clinical outcomes at two years and five years than the compression, sur the compression surgery alone. So they could not find uh, fusion is uh, adding something better to, to the outcomes. Uh, another work from 2017 uh, comparing five studies uh, no conclusion regarding which treatment is better however side effects of surgical group is between 10 to 24 uh, percent and uh, they could not find uh, a, a superiority of any technique to, uh, to the other one instead there is some uh, higher complication rate in the surgical group uh, in conclusion the relative efficacy of various surgical options for treatment of spine stenosis are still uh, uncertain the compression plus uh, fusion is not more effective than the compression alone this is uh, the conclusion of 2015 work Interspinous process spacer devices has resulted in higher reoperation rates than bony decompression. So they don't uh, recommend using interspinous process devices. What can we tell at the end? Decompression is the basis of surgical treatment for lumbar spine stenosis. Indications of surgery are mostly uh, just a claudication and to increase the quality of life 
Urinal approach bilateral decompression is currently most popular surgery, but its value is not much validated yet. MIS techniques for spine cell have significant advantages, uh, uh, less complication rates, uh, and uh, very quick return to work or daily life. Fusion is an option, especially when listasis or instability are present, but indications are still controversial. Decision, decision making for complex spine cells is quite difficult. Decompression without fusion in degenerative listasis is possible. Uh, we must always have a additional back pain uh, for, uh, to indicate a fusion. Overt instability, preserved discite, probably female patients are more prone to develop instability. Better to perform short fusions. In elderly populations, the fusion surgery has up to 25% complication rates. So our decision should be affected more with clinical symptoms than radiology. There is no good correlation between radiology and symptoms. We must uh, stress that point. It's very important. This is my algorithm uh, for neurogenic claudication patients. Uh, the first question is, is asking whether they, they have back pain or not. If there is no back pain, consider first the decompression alone surgeries. If there is some back pain, uh, and if there is no significant instability, then facet injections, sacroiliac joint injection, brace and exercises may be a good option. If they don't benefit from such conservative measures, then uh, you can think about decompression and fusion. If there is significant radiologic instability, yes, this is, this is inevitable to make a decompression and fusion. I uh, end my talk here and then uh, <coughs> we uh, postponed our meeting Istanbul Spine Masters to October 1-3. I guess we, we can achieve it. Uh, everything is settled. There is also an endoscopic course during that meeting and our uh, Milan meeting has been postponed to March 2021. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Professor Zileli. This is an important area, lumbar canal stenosis, and you gave a very thorough treatment subject. Um, can I uh, ask uh, Professor Miguel Aras, um, do you have uh, any comments on Professor Zileli's talk? Uh, any questions or uh, any observations from your from practice, sir? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Maren, again for this wonderful initiative. I'll, I'd like also to congratulate uh, Professor Sibeli for the wonderful, very uh, well done. And uh, I appreciate a couple of things regarding the presentation of Professor Sibeli. First of all, the issue of the current refinement of the surgical technique by means of means and uh, basically, this uh, microsurgical, microsurgical or endoscopic approach, and also in favor of microsurgery for for this sort of approaches. And I also very much appreciate your comment regarding the need for fusion. I, my my humble understanding, uh, my humble understanding regarding spinal lumbar stenosis is that in many instances after surgery there is no at all the post-operative instability so there is no need for fusion i think that uh, when we are facing a patient with a spinal stenosis you know the facet joints and everything is so big that even drilling a little bit some part some a small proportion of the uh, global volume of the joints and also due to the stage of advanced degenerative spine that is almost spontaneously fused or at least with less mobility. In summary, I think there is no need for uh, fusion. 
this is my 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 comment and I'm, I'm, I'm glad uh, dr Sileri is uh, in agreement with me i have one question for you uh, what is your uh, point of view and your surgical attitude when you have a patient with degenerative uh, spondylolisthesis no lysis lateral stenosis provoking basically radicular symptoms but the patient has a grade one spondylolisthesis do you fuse or not what is your what is your opinion yeah uh, we must have additional information uh, to decide that one is whether the patient has back pain does he have back pain okay back so pain? Ima Im imagine the patient doesn't have uh, back pain first possibility yes if there is no back pain uh, i would be more on from for, on the side of decompression alone surgery okay uh, but if there is significant instability sign uh, on the films like uh, if uh, on the functional films it's moving if there is significant modic changes at the level so i will discuss that with the patient uh, i would tell the patient that after the compression surgery you may have more back pains after all or uh, it may uh, recur again the same level may get uh, rest stenotic okay uh, if you accept that we, i will do just the compression i would say okay i have a, a second question taking advantage of your expertise uh, professor sileli imagine the patient have a back pain imagine there is some sort of uh, movement in the uh, functional uh, images functional x-ray films uh, do you consider for those cases i think this this question could be almost in everybody's mind is there any role for these new uh, devices for interspinose fixation that is something simpler than the pedicle screws using with the aid of uh, uh, some fusion with uh, autologous bone and bone promoters and things like that is there is there any role for interspinose fixation devices this is the question yes uh, in fact, there is no class one evidence that interspinous devices are helpful in lumbar spinal stenosis. There is no class one paper. But uh, uh, there may be limited uh, uh, indications for that. Those are moderately stenotic patients who are having uh, neurogenic claudication uh, by very in lordotic positions i mean during walking uh, those patients uh, can benefit from interspinous devices for a while but they, they, they must be moderately stenotic not severely stenotic and uh, they they can have uh, back pain or not it doesn't matter okay but unfortunately no good serious no good evidence in the literature okay thank you very much thank you very much congratulations again for your wonderful lecture and thank, thank you. you for sharing with us your your experience thank you thank you thank you very much uh, professor Major. um there's a couple of questions uh, <laughs> professor zileli on the chat area i will just uh, take one question if you can if you would please kind enough to take time to answer them on the chat box uh, the other questions i will be grateful okay. uh, the, one question is from dr najar he's saying professor zileli thank you for your presentation what's the cause of high percentage 25% uh, as i read in failure of fusion in stenosis treatment yeah what's the cause uh, yeah no this is uh, if you apply instrumented fusion in the older ca uh, cases in the uh, elderly patients it is in the elderly patients 
some of the complications are like because of uh, bleeding they can have uh, intraoperative uh, hypertension hypotension uh, bleeding related problems they can have uh, since they have osteoporosis implant failure rate is quite higher uh, and uh, the infection rate uh, may reach up to 5% in some series. Uh, because of that, the total uh, complication rate, rate in the long term, if you follow them good enough, uh, may reach up to 25 in elderly patients if you perform a fusion surgery. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Zileli. Um, it was a fantastic lecture. I really enjoy and learn a lot from your talks over the years. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. And once again, there are a few more questions on the chat box. Yeah, I, will, I will answer them. Great, great.